Hi friends, this is Ryan with Newable Building Sources back here in Piasta, Iowa on Commercial ICF Project. Um, finally making it back here, kind of swing around here. Um, today's plan is we are going to cut in some ICF connect brackets for the wood floor system that goes into the ICF walls, as well as cut in a couple beam sections that are going to be flowing through this doorway over here, which let me show you kind of over here in this opening here where we have got to connect that ICF wall to that ICF wall. So I'll give you kind of a step-by-step play-by-play on how we're going to do. Uh, make sure we pound that like button and subscribe button for the YouTube. Uh, keep the questions coming and I will provide the questions and answers via YouTube. So again, Ryan with Newable, stay tuned as we show you how to do some more important ICF work. And I'm um, coming back to you to talk to about the step one of ICF bond beam installation. So ICF bond beams can be used for headers above garage doors, uh, the headers above windows. Uh, when we're using concrete floor, the quad deck system, it's gonna be the concrete beams. So as an ICF guy, what we wanna do is we don't wanna have steel beams come in here. We don't wanna have to be at the mercy of anybody else. So we wanna incorporate concrete beams or bond beams, uh, headers, ourselves. So I showed earlier kind of the area that we're looking. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera around here a little bit. And in step one, you're gonna see it's all about marking and layout. It's important to understand the heights. In our particular case, we're looking to go nine foot to the bottom of the beam. So I always kind of look at this as the picture time, uh, Bill Cosby picture time, time to get your crayons and pencils kind of a thing. And what we do in the ICF world is we use Sharpies and we use the foam. So all those marks right there, you see the top plates of the interior walls line up with the interior wall. The second mark there of the nine on it, that is the bottom of the beam. The, the two marks that I've got here is the width of the wall laid out from that dimension to line up with that cavity right there. Over here on the wood wall, you see the lines with the X's. That is what will be the bottom of our beam and what everything sits on. So step one of bond beams. So all too often we're underusing these, underutilizing them. These can be used in many, many areas to save time, save, save money, um, and not have to incorporate another building material. So stay tuned as we continue the process. But. Here's where we're at. We're at step two already. Um, it's been probably 45 minutes uh, in real time here. Half of that time was uh, I had a coffee, I had to find the stuff and tromp through the snow. So it would have been a little bit quicker than that. But anyways, I flip it. There is the beam. Um, we've got that set. So what we've got here is a, a two by 12. You can use a Luma beam, steel post, whatever you've got. We'll build a temporary wall underneath that. And then you'll see the, the two by 12 laying flat. That's actually flush with the ICF wall. You can see the ICF braces are kind of in there. What's tricky about this is we're on ice. It's a, you know, ice skating rink in here, so kind of slippery. So those plates are actually um, not connected to the floor, but we had them set pre-ice uh, and weather, and we've got them screwed back in here to this interior wall to keep the bottom straight to hold the bracing. So that is step two as the beam is in. Step, step three is gonna be access because we're actually gonna stack the ICF wall the four courses up that you can see up there on top of this thing. So um, I'm gonna build a little platform in here to kind of carry those planks through. Um, but again, uh, step two is the actual temporary beam that goes underneath there to hold the concrete in. All right, stay tuned. And again, pound that subscribe button. Now step three or and four is kind of subjective. It's kind of like chicken or egg. Um, it really comes down to the temporary shoring underneath the beam and or setting the foam. Uh, in my case, I like to set the foam so these guys can keep going with the steel and I'll build the shoring here after a bit. But step three in our case is the ICF wall set. So we also, you can see we've got the safety railings on. We've got the platform over here. Since this is two-sided, um, we'll have this brace on kitchen this side of the wall and then as we extend back up you can see we'll use two by fours on this inside edge which then this is nice because this connects our walk plank and our path then to the rest of the wall and the rest of the pour so next step the next step here kind of our icf connects here you can see that these are kind of cut in into the foam there those are actually the ledger system for the roof 
it sits on top of that wall which is all shot in at 12 foot these are held up an inch higher than the top plate that gets installed on top of this wall but as we kind of browse around here you can see all the other brackets are set there for the floor system as well and as our bond beam carries through here this is the demising wall <coughs> set up between rooms here that's a kind of a tenant space and this is the demising wall so this will plane through here at the same plane and those brackets that you can see over there will stick into this side of the wall for the floor this all gets floor system this side over here gets roof so again we're making good progress on our icf bond beam this is ryan with newable building sources and let's go people pound that like button and pound that subscribe all right we have step four of our icf bond beam complete here which is the shoring i kind of talked about what comes first uh, the chicken or the egg um, the icf is already in and then here you can see the shoring so basically what we did here is we've got this wall two foot on center uh, strapped in underneath our beam do I need to have these two foot on center? Uh, that answer is probably no if we're going to do a conventional window header or garage door. But what I did not tell you guys is that wall is actually 16 feet on top of that. So um, I did lie a little bit in the fact that, it, or not tell the whole truth, that that has 16 feet of an 8 inch concrete core sticking on top of it. So that is why we reinforced it the way we did. Um, so again, Here's kind of our, our beam creation here that we've got. We've got everything fastened to the floor a couple different directions with the beams. <clears throat> now, as we spin back around here, you can kind of see the completion of the ICF and what's gonna happen. And again, that is 15 more feet of ICF that sit on top of that block right there. So ICF bond beam complete. So come on engineers, come on architects, come on builders. There's no reason to use steel or anything else. Let's do it in ICF. Um, now, the next step of this is less interesting. That's the steel and the actual concrete pour. Uh, my job here is to prove that we can do about anything with the ICF. <clears throat> concrete being poured in ICF is concrete being poured in ICF. Steel and ICF is steel and ICF. But the ultimate creations are the bond beams, the wall heights, the structures, right? And trying to prove everybody to do something different. This, you'll see actually the tapered wall, that is the gabled end of the roof truss and pitch in this room. So again, uh, as with all of our projects through the Midwest, high detail, high skill level required, but better, better than anything, it's all ICF.